Welcome back to the No Such Thing as a Fish comic relief marathon. We are now coming up to our fourth fact. Just a quick reminder, the whole reason we're doing this today, this 20 hour long, 35 fact packed <laughs> marathon is because we want to raise money for comic relief. And you guys have been so generous so far, but we would we would love to raise some more. Um, we should also say there's fantastic red noses that you can get if you go to your local Sainsbury's. There's also, I just bought some toys for my boys. Uh, you can get these as well. Oh, there's wow. mugs and so They're really cool. Nice. Really, yeah. yeah nice little snail. Um, anyway, we are very excited to have our next guest on. He is, uh, oh God, just one of the defining voices of comedy, of satire in this country. We've had him on TV for years with Have I Got News For You. We've had him even longer at the helm of the greatest satirical paper uh, magazine that's ever been published in the UK, uh, Private Eye. Please welcome <laughs> to, that came out all right, I think. Please yeah, welcome okay. to the show for fact number four. It is the almighty Ian Hislop. Hey! Hello. Hi. I was only laughing because I could see Ian's face when he was being introduced there. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought it was what? someone else. <laughs> I was I worried know. I said like a rival newspaper or something. But you think we the had the editor editor of, of Punch magazine? Punch, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I thought that sounded good. I must get a subscription. <laughs> Ian, thank you for being with us uh, today for this charity thing. Um, let's get into your fact. What have you got for us? Um, Mrs. Thatcher had the same nickname as the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> 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 and it grew, um, and it yep. wasn't that big thing that we can't avoid. <laughs> it was the Iron Lady. Very yeah, nice. Okay. Tall, inflexible. Um, oh. And yeah. I gather um, she was given this nickname. It's one of those nicknames that you don't quite believe because it's like someone who says, yeah, at school, I was known as the incredibly cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you weren't. That's that's pathetic. Well, anyway, no, but, but I was, though. I was. So I think that's <laughs> Dan, pretty... Dan, we, know what you were known, <laughs> we know what you were known as at school, and it was Dan Dan. Uh, because that was Mandarin for testicles. Yeah. Do you know that? <laughs> Which no one told me until I was on Yeah. God, I'm sorry called... to have set that up, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so who gave it to her? Do we know who gave her this? Yeah, she was. I mean, again, this is the story, but, it, you know, I have a feeling it might have just been dreamt up by someone um, in her front office. But apparently, it was a Soviet journalist. Um, who had one look at her, and even by Soviet terms, he thought, wow, um, <laughs> she was known as the Iron Lady. And, mm. I mean, this nickname's been used before. You know, Bismarck was the Iron Chancellor. Um, Napoleon um, was very keen for people to say that he was the Iron Fist in the Velvet Club. And I, I kept looking this fact up, and no one ever said it about it. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted them to say this. So wow. I think this sort of the Iron Man thing is is something that people are very keen to be known as. Yeah. Well, it's nice yeah. that Napoleon can rest easy now that we've finally got his nickname out there. <laughs> all these years. It's, it is a weird story, isn't it? Because um, there was a guy called Gavrilov, and he wrote, apparently, that... Um, Lady Th uh, Margaret Thatcher was known by her friends as the Iron Lady. And um, then it was another uh, journalist from Reuters who saw this and thought, well, I'm going to say that the Soviets call her the Iron Lady. Uh, and then a few days later, uh, Margaret Thatcher uh, stood up in front of a conference and said, they call me the Iron Lady. So it was, wow. you know, everyone was saying that everyone else was calling her that. I don't they have did. your own nickname. It's just so cringe, Maggie. <laughs> don't say my nickname's the Iron Lady. That's really embarrassing. She, uh, the whole speech was a bit cringe, wasn't it? It was <laughs> one where she said, here I am in my red star, because the red star was the newspaper that apparently had called her it, in my red star dress, my face softly made up, and my fair hair gently waved, the Iron Lady of the Western world. Yes, I am an Iron Lady. Wow. <laughs> she was never, never awfully good at jokes. Um, no. it, it wasn't really her thing and you can tell with the iron lady that it, it's 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 one of those nicknames that's too flattering if you think that her predecessor edward heath um who was furious for his whole the rest of his career about being displaced by mrs thatcher he was known as the incredible sulk <laughs> a really good and really funny nickname um and that's it's clearly right. given to him by someone who cares 
Beyonce <laughs> Lee, nah. But so, so many, Iron Lady, so many... Incredible Sulk. Do we have the whole Avengers team in <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know? But Thatcher has so many other nicknames as well. So there is a there are you know pages online devoted to the various nicknames she had. There was um, that great charmer, um, yes. Tina. Was this known at the time? In the, the where she you know there is no alternative that acronym. Was she ever known yeah. as Tina? I, it was one of those that nobody ever used, but uh, someone in a column thought. I mean, when I was growing up, she was known as Mrs. Thatcher Milk Snatcher. Right. Mm, yeah. Because at school everybody got a third of a pint free. Um, at break time, and this was given to children to try and make them healthy. Apparently, nowadays, you, you guys should look this up, but apparently giving children milk is disastrous. <laughs> um, and Mrs. Thatcher should be applauded as a sort of health pioneer. Uh, no one likes lactose these days, do they? They yeah. need some almond milk to all the children or something. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't she make ice cream, though? Wasn't that her thing for a bit? Or have I made oh, that God, up? She, no, 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 you're right. I think she was stealing the milk for the ice cream. No, I just say <laughs> milk's a bit of an ice cream competitor. Not directly, but, you know, to an extent. Maybe she was kind of monopolised. I'm yeah. sorry, milk is not an ice cream competitor. When have you ever thought, shall I have a vanilla ice cream well, or shall I have a glass? It's obviously Dan's fatherhood technique of his children saying, can I have an ice cream? And he's like, no, you'll have some milk. There's milk at home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. I mean, I think the ice cream, it was um, because she'd been a, a scientist and I think she'd been a food scientist. Mm. And again, I think the idea was to try and find something um, accessible um, <laughs> that the public might like, <laughs> rather than saying you're a, a food scientist. It was she worked on, I think, Mr. Whippy or Wolf. No, I've made that bit up. Um, it was Walls. Mr. Whippy was Norman Lamont, wasn't it? That was <laughs> that <made> <laughs> of um, <laughs> Tory scandal. Anyway, <laughs> you'll get sued. Um, <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> yeah. Might be late for that. Oh, God, um, yeah, that's yeah. dangerous. Aren't you the most sued man? In, what are we doing bringing you on our show? You're technically... <laughs> Hopeless. And, and also, it's... I mean, I remember in the early days of um, uh, Comic Relief, um, where um, I used to work on Spitting Image, and, and Spitting Image did some stuff, and I did some stuff, and I, I always thought... Why am I being uncharitable about people for charity? <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, oh, all right. I mean, it seems like a good cause. So there we go. <laughs> it works. It does the trick. I'm you... very pleased to be invited, though, because I read in the Times this morning that um, people over 40 aren't usually invited on podcasts. Um, oh, no. So. Uh, really? If this is a token appearance, I'm really, really thankful. <laughs> I'll tell you what, our, um, our under 30 listeners are going to love that Mr. Whippy joke you made a few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's very much one for the teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just had a quick look at what we said about Margaret Thatcher before. And, mm. I, Ian, you probably wrote about this at the time, but we mentioned once the time that um, Margaret Thatcher's husband, Dennis, was he was at a garden party and he was asked to feed the elephant of the president of Sri Lanka who <laughs> had a pet elephant and Dennis Thatcher clearly knew nothing about elephant anatomy because he picked up six bananas and he just stuffed them up its trunk and he didn't <laughs> stop he didn't offer it he just <laughs> kept pushing them up there until it sort of sprayed everyone with gunk <laughs> Oh, where was that? I, I, I applaud the effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Obviously, he hadn't done a lot of elephant observance no. um, yeah. in his time. No, I you mean, yeah. she, she again sort of, um, she became um, associated with things that were meant to be derogatory but weren't at all. I mean, the most famous sketch on Spitting Image, which I worked on, again, there's one for the teenagers, but I gather it's been been revived um, in the old days. And there was a very famous sketch of her going into the House of Commons with the cabinet and saying, uh, the chef saying to her, what would you like? She said, I'll have the steak. And then he says, what about the vegetables? And she said, yes, they'll all have the steak. <laughs> now, it was quite a good joke, but then... I then discovered that members of the cabinet were retelling this as though it happened. Um, <laughs> really? An after dinner anecdote, which I actually heard people tell. Really? As real. Mm. And That's the point of that was because it's a great story for her. Yeah. Everybody surrounding her is a vegetable. Um, yeah. Isn't that amusing? I'm the Iron Lady. Yeah. That yeah. just goes to show that fake news is not just a modern day phenomenon, is it? That's how <laughs> easily that kind of thing happens. I'm sure half of them believed she'd really said it. Yeah, no, and I, 
I mean, again, for your younger listeners, I mean, just to warn them that um, by the time they're my age, they'll have told the same anecdote so many times that they'll have no idea if they're true <laughs> or not. <laughs> and they may well not be. <laughs> okay. You know, but it would have rung alarm bells, right? Because as you say, she didn't have a good sense of humour, which is weird because there are all kind of humorous quotes and um, attitudes attributed to her. But she didn't even get the ladies not for turning, I don't think, when no, she was really. the most famous quote, you know, you turn if you want to, the ladies not for turning. Um, I don't think she it, understood it, this what I said. It is a reference to quite a, an obscure play called The Ladies Not for Burning. So Yeah, you know, sorry, I, I must admit I didn't get that. Oh, no, that? sorry, I, I thought that she just didn't get the U-turn because, you, you know, it's a U-turn. Oh. Yeah, no, the, 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 the reference was by some rather literary and overeducated member uh, <laughs> of oh, uh, wow. team ads. No, well, another she time. didn't get that, that's fine. Oh, she didn't Maggie, get that. I, I thought there she was just didn't get that. She told at um, a political conference, which was about Moses coming down from the mountain and someone saying, keep taking the tablets. And Mrs. Thatcher apparently said to him, surely it should be pills. Taking <laughs> <laughs> the pills. Um, this, it's clearly it does act as a kind of advantage if you're seen would all to have these very distinctive characteristics in the public mind. So there was another occasion. This was um, I read this in the New Yorker. She she had compared something to waiting for Godot, but she pronounced it Godot. You know, hard mm. T at the end. And her foreign secretary, Lord Carrington, uh, which is leaned over and whispered, uh, is pronounced Godot, Prime Minister. And she said, "How is it spelled?" And Carrington spelled it out. And then she said, "Then it's Godot." And you know, wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't accept. Yeah, ladies well, are learning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow. Which, which is great. I, I think she felt she she'd had a lifetime of being patronised by yeah. quite well educated old Etonians and leaning over and saying, "I think you'll find." <laughs> um, yeah. And in the end, she thought, "No, I'll just say it how I feel like it." Really. Yeah. Uh, there's one more joke which is related to Margaret Thatcher, and that is the classic "May the Fourth be with you." joke that happens every year with star wars so every may the fall for the star wars fans and for the podcast listeners star wars was an old film that was, <laughs> it's not but, just no, them <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so um the conservative party invented the joke may the fourth be with you and it was for when she got elected in 1979 so the film had just come out oh. she got elected i think it was on may the third or it was started right. anyway and um the next day they did a big splash in the newspaper saying maggie thatcher may the fourth be with you wow yeah. that's so funny i'm, I'm almost surprised <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's almost I'm a... surprising the directors of star wars didn't ring up tory party hq and say i'm really sorry do you mind not using our <laughs> tagline associating it with your brand because yeah. oh, that's embarrassing for them yeah it is i was um very quickly i was looking into other political nicknames uh, yes. that have been given and uh, there's, there's lovely lists where you see one people attributing and giving it to someone else. And then I discovered that there's a Wikipedia page, which is called list of nicknames used by Donald Trump. And I just want to quickly show you guys. So this is the page. Okay. Look how many nicknames Whoa. Donald Trump created in four years of office. Are they for other people? Or that was, these are all different people. That's domestic politicians. We now move on to foreign <laughs> leaders. Any good ones in there? Anything Media clever? Figures. Nothing clever. No, it's all you know, <laughs> dopey prints for a Saudi Arabian businessman. Uh, you know, yeah. the loser project for the Lincoln project. That's down to organizers. I mean, it's a phenomenal list. But his idea was never to be clever. I mean, that wasn't going to happen. Mm. Um, yeah. What he is is mean. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Sleepy Joe, it's not clever uh, for an old bloke. It sticks. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, that's what Trump was good at. I mean, it is playground bullies. No one says about playground bullies. Oh, they're so uninspired. <laughs> <laughs> they really be clever. What they're good at is finding stuff that hurts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's true. Mind you, am I the only one who found um, Anthony Scaramucci's nickname for Reince Priebus quite funny? What which, was it? 
was um, so do you remember when that Anthony Scaramucci's brief one week period of working for Donald Trump mm. uh, he hated Reince Priebus right uh, the chief of staff and he called him rancid penis <laughs> it's so close to being an anagram that you've got to give him some credit for that yeah no that's pretty good yeah <laughs> um the, the Aussies have a lot of I mean Dan you're from Australia Australian yeah. political nicknames are quite they're a bit more forceful, I think, than British political nicknames, you know, Milk Snatcher and so on. The first ever Prime Minister of Australia was nicknamed Toby Tosspot. He wasn't even called Toby. Um, he was called Edmund. But, uh, what? Why was he called that? Well, he liked long dinners, and it's slang for a drinker. It's someone who, you know, uh, likes, tos- you know, a Tosspot. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's Toby. what they told him. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got some great, the Silver Bodgy, um, Pig Iron Bob. One of them was just called The Rat. Um, yeah, they have great yeah, nicknames. Yeah. Over here, everyone's just trying to be clever. So, yeah. <laughs> Keir Starmer is steer calmer. I read, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good. And um, when Blair was there, people were saying, did you know that it's it's Tony B. Liar? And you mm. see, he's, it's an anagram. Oh, yeah. And, and it, it just didn't catch on. <laughs> <laughs> if he was called Tony Tosspot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, again, um, that that may just be domestic, but uh, <laughs> being clever doesn't necessarily help. No, uh, it's satisfying. Yeah, though. I mean, I mean, I Mrs. Thatcher ended up. Um, I mean, in, in in the latter days of Spitting Image, after about ten years of a vicious satirical attack, um, uh, she was brought down, obviously, by her own government, knife <laughs> <laughs> in the back, and removed. And um, Spitting Image had gone through. I think she appeared as Caligula, Churchill, uh, bloke in a suit, you name it, um, more or less run out of ideas. Um, and then she went. So um, uh, sometimes it's sort of the idea that you're going to undermine someone with this bit of brilliance. Mm. Yeah. That doesn't happen. Yeah. There was a very good, um, I think it was another podcast, I can't remember whose, about how actually um, it might do them more good than harm, often these things. I think it was about, uh, and it was a podcast that was talking about Harry Enfield sketches, how they laid into the wealthy, but actually it doesn't seem to have any, so make any social difference at all. So actually satire is completely pointless. Do you, do you mean things well, like loads of money, Anna, or yeah, that kind of, yeah. All the money stuff. Like, yeah, well, yeah. Just after he did loads of money, Nigel Lawson, who was Mrs. Thatcher's chancellor, um, got himself described as chancellor loads of money, um, literally <laughs> appropriating the character. Wow. And there you a, go. Lot of, a lot of um, sort of successful Thatcherite people at the time um, looked at the sketch and thought, yeah, I'm going to wave a wad of cash in the face of people who don't have what I've got <laughs> and say loads. <laughs> this is a raw model. Wow. Yeah, and they were on an early, I'm, I'm pretty sure they were on an early comic relief singing the Loads of Money song. <laughs> oh, really? Um, unless I've just imagined that. No, no I, I think I've I, seen that. I think I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. On stage. Um, um, I found a pop. Oh, sorry, go on. Go on, Ian. No, no, I can't. I can't imagine what I was going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> singing. I was, um, I was going to quickly say that um, a lot of politicians sort of like to get away from those crudish names, but I did find one guy who kind of was sticking to his guns. So this was a Republican mayor in Fort Wayne, Indiana, between 1932 and 1954. He was out of the office at very point, various points, um, but his name, which he refused to change, was. Harry or Harry Balls. And <laughs> Harry Balls had his name on all his stickers, which had sort of like bizarre innuendo. And he's he's he basically liked it so much, but people found it awkward that they tried to change it to Bales, but he really wouldn't let them. They'd be like, it's Harry Bales. And he'd be saying, it's Harry Balls, actually. <laughs> and there's there's even radio presenters who would get a call from him mid-broadcast saying, This is your mayor, son. It's pronounced balls whenever they try to do, wow. uh, yeah, bowels. Yep. And the family has now actually changed it because he was honored. He was a big mayor in the place and he had ha- Harry Balls Drive and so on. And now it's H Balls Drive as opposed to Harry. Because Oh, really? So they kept the balls part? Hmm. Well, the, yeah, the sign just kept getting stolen for Harry Balls. <laughs> um, so it was costing them a fortune. Well, that is, that's the opposite, isn't it? Um, uh, you know, we had a very prominent Labour politician called Ed Balls, mm. and for about a decade, most comics were just not doing that joke. Yeah. Too obvious. Um, too obvious, even in the House of Commons, which isn't renowned. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, you know, when he was coming up with totally impenetrable stuff at the Treasury about um, neo-endogenous growth zones and um, new <laughs> ways of driving the economy. No one said which they wanted to. Well, Ed, that's, that's just... Ah, that's <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, there's one more thing about Thatcher, which I know we're not talking about Thatcher anymore. I know we've moved on to take names, but if I don't say it, I'll never forgive myself, which is she was so <laughs> punctual for her appointments and when she was traveling around to do official events and things that when she her official car was approaching a town, um, she would be far too early. And the, the whole, you know, um, what's it called? You know, the official car you know the official procession oh, yeah exactly cavalcade the cavalcade the cavalcade oh, basically well, <laughs> <laughs> just get on with it just say it yeah <laughs> the whole procession they had to pull in at the side of the road and wait and people would be driving past a lay-by near their town they just see margaret thatcher sitting in a lay-by in a car <laughs> was that <laughs> Mrs. Thatcher. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, the thing with Mrs. Thatcher, I mean, um, we're doing facts about her. I just, I couldn't get over how funny the crown is because they they had a scene of, of Mrs. Thatcher and the Queen weeping together <laughs> about the loss um, of their sons. You know, Mark Thatcher was lost in the desert for a while and um, Prince Andrew was lost briefly, I think, at the Falklands. I mean, <laughs> the <laughs> coincide with him on the crown. But anyway, it was just this lovely idea of Mrs. Thatcher weeping with the Queen. And yeah. I thought, well, there's a fact she wouldn't have liked. Yeah. Yes. I feel like the Iron Lady would rust, wouldn't she, if she's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> They completely misrepresented that. I think the Queen wept when Andrew came back. Um, <laughs> she certainly would be now. <laughs> Uh, just a little quick, quick thing on um, nicknames, it's a bit silly, mm. but um, we've been really smashing the um, pop culture in this section, so I just yeah. thought, I'd, uh, since 2017, uh, Jay-Z met J-Lo, uh, and that was Jacob Zuma, the president of South, Af South Africa, <laughs> meeting Joe Lorenzo, the new president of Angola. Ah, <laughs> brilliant. Did they call themselves? Was that another self-describing nickname? That that's, what, you know, that's what the internet claims their nickname is, Jay-Z and J-Lo. Mm. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm so down with it that I thought Kanye West was a constituency. <laughs> 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 Do you know what? There is a place called Kanye in the su Southern Africa somewhere. I think it might be in Uganda. And Bots they do yeah. have Botswana. Botswana, yeah. Have constituencies but they have Kanye North and Kanye South and yeah. they don't have Kanye West. Yeah. No Kanye West. <laughs> That's great. so great. Can I quickly interrupt to say that we've just hit £30,000 on <gasps> our Just Giving page. Fabulous. Thank you so much everyone who is donating to this. This is really going to make a massive difference and um, you can see that we have a target of 35000 that was bullshit. We put that there for show. <laughs> we want a million. So keep going. Don't get put off by that. Why don't um, we put it up to 36, Dub? Just to, you know. Yeah. Let's, let's just keep it always £10 ahead of where we are. I don't think we want to get too big for our boots. But thank, thank you. I, oh, sorry, go on. Stay on. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt your total. No, Carry no, on. no. The totals uh, is fine. Uh, we'll get to it later. I was asked before, before I did this about my own nicknames. Um, both both of which instances um, are just a bit sad because they're both borrowed. At school, I was known as Big Ian because there was a six-foot bloke called Ian <laughs> um, who genuinely was big, but, and no one could be bothered, so I just got his um, <laughs> ironic cast-off. Um, and when I joined Private Eye, um, Michael Heseltine was known at the time as Hezer, um, so I just became Hezer. <laughs> um, it sounded a bit like it, and I felt I've never really got my own nickname. Oh, uh, thank you. That's the sympathy. So we'll... <laughs> yeah. It's a day of charity. Um, so if, if you really can't donate anything monetarily, then maybe you could donate a nickname idea for Ian. Is that what <laughs> we're saying? Yeah. Drop yeah. them in the YouTube comments, and if I, I see one, that yeah, works. No, and obviously, I won't be reading any of them because I don't go online. But <laughs> anybody who suggests the Iron Editor. You know, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs>
just on the this is just on politicians and funny names but mm -hmm. i was reading a book that's i think it came out recently called the gatekeeper it's by kate fall about cameron's days and he there was a story about when he was in india and he was asked to thank a local politician who was actually a really prominent uh, she's the longest serving chief minister of delhi um and she she died in 2019 i think and so she was a big deal but she, there was a crisis because she was called sheila dick shit and David Cameron said to his staff, I don't, is there any way we can get around this? Can we possibly not thank her? And I think that was Wow. wow. What, a, what a PR man he was all the way through. I can't get through this without laughing, so I'm just not going to thank this important politician. That no, tells I, you quite a lot. I probably exaggerated it. I think there was some tension about the fact he was going to have to. You see, Mrs. Thatcher would have just mispronounced it. And said, <laughs> yeah. uh, as someone is suggesting iron hislop. That'll do fine. That's very, very close. close. Yes, no, iron that's hislop. Great. Yeah, that's oh. from Voltan Hawkman. That's, uh, <laughs> someone who knows good nicknames. Obviously <laughs> nicked from Flash Gordon, but uh, yeah. yeah no, well, I, again, that, that was Gordon Brown's, which... People in the Labour Party wanted people to call him Flash Gordon while he was Prime Minister. I mean, again, it didn't last very long, and nobody yeah. did. No. Wasn't, wasn't he Big Clunking Fist for a while? But yes. like, I can't remember where he got that from. It might have been from Blair? Or... I think that was, again, from inside the party. And yeah. again, it wasn't meant to be particularly flattering. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound it. I don't think anyone's under illusions. Um, no, but it was after the sort of rather nuanced and um, elegant style of Blair um, in yes. came Gordon. <laughs> yeah. I've always uh, thought the most, the most Gordon Brown story I know is from when before he was Chancellor and he was asked to give a speech to a group of pensioners. It was just some like local council thing or something. And he was asked to speak for 45 minutes. And so he gave a 45 minute speech about the intricacies of local finance. And he'd misheard and he'd been asked to speak for four to five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> poor man poor yeah. man that's too good. the story that was told the, the difference between his style and blair's style is the same group of ambassadors from the same country went to a, um, a meeting with blair and one with brown and the meeting with brown he'd stayed up all night he'd read two biographies of the prime minister he'd read um a, a, a history of the country um he was frazzled he got in there he'd got piles of notes they hated him there read nothing at all asked his aides for a powerpoint three points they came in he smiled a lot they loved him <laughs> it's That's just fair isn't it well, that's how Dan's got through the podcast so far the last six years. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, sorry, didn't Gordon Brown get locked in Tony Blair's toilet once as well? Do you remember? It, it wasn't Tony Blair's. It was at Granita, I think, the restaurant where they were. Wasn't yeah. that where they had their pact? They agreed. I think this was the same meal well, where Tony Blair said, I'm going to have, I, again, I'm probably going to fudge the details, but I think... That was the meeting where they said, oh, Blair will have one term or two terms, then hand over. And Brown went to the loo and he was ages. Ian, is that... Can you yeah, remember if it was Granita or...? Of this, ma this meal were much disputed. Um, <laughs> yes. Partly because I think they should have written the contract on a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> um, because um, I think Brown's memory of it was that Blair would hand over. Blair's memory of it seems to have been rather different. <laughs> In that Gordon would, would, would at no point ever want to take the job and would serve loyally. And this created a good, a good um, decade of friction. Um, oh, it was, a, it was a fun decade, though. If he got stuck in the toilet all the time, he could have been flush Gordon, couldn't he? <laughs> See, now that would have been terrific. Sorry, what about our current Chancellor, who's known as Dishy Rishi? Dishy Rishi. Uh, yeah. That's that's a seriously undermining nickname, that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I you're don't... so good looking, sir. <laughs> I don't know how we've messed that up by being quite so flattering, because that one really has caught on, hasn't he? We call, we all call him Rish the Dish. Yeah. Um, yeah, we need to work on it. It's bad. <laughs> we get this situation. <laughs> This is the man who was encouraging us to go out and put food on a dish and then catch the virus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then go home again. Um, there should have been something better. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, listen, we're going to have to wrap up, unfortunately. Uh, again, time has whizzed by. But Ian, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for helping us get this number, which is now topped up to 31,269. So we're flying at this point. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, so thank you to the wonderful, the mighty Iron Hislop. <laughs> and we will be back in a couple of minutes for fact number five with Stephen Fry. We'll see you then. Thank you very much. Bye. Hello, everybody. That was fun, wasn't it? Well, now you have to pay. Please, please go to comicrelief.com slash fish and give us all of your money so that it can be spent on fabulous causes around the world. There are many more videos where these came from. So bring all of your money and give it to us. Link is below. Click on the link.